So welcome back. It's time to update the view. So this step of, uh, of getting the three clicks, that's what we did last time. Uh, this step of updating the model object, we did this last time. And that step doesn't really exist. Um, so really what we're focused on now is we're worried about updating the view. So we're going to be responsible for the text message, um, updating the class on the body for that no cuts blur, and then we're going to be updating the class on the image uh, so that it does all the animations and rotations. So let's just go ahead and start uh, writing these things. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure you've removed uh, that temporary thing that, that was changing the view before. Uh, we did that last time. Is we're going to make a function called update view, and we're just going to call it from any time where the, the view needs an update, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say rh.coffee.updateView. And so I'm going to call that um, whenever the page loads, just to kind of make sure that, uh, that all things are set. And then I'm also going to call that after any button press. Also, if you want, you can get rid of your uh, console log messages. You can leave them if you want. Uh, they, they might help in, in case you're having problems. Um, but they uh, shouldn't be required once we get update view functional, right? So I went ahead and just kind of made a function called update view. So there are three tasks in this particular app that we need to do. So we need to update the text message. Uh, we need to update the no cups class, uh, which is actually on the body element. And then we need to also update uh, the class on the image, right? So those are the three tasks that we're going to be doing. And we'll just kind of do them one at a time, right? So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to make a string variable uh, that just holds the value of um, whatever the string says. So you've had, um, you know, blank. So I'm just going to say coffee cups and then cups of coffee. Um, you may, uh, if, you, if you look at this, you'll notice a couple things. First off, I use the word var here. So this declares it to be a local variable. If you leave off the word var, it still works, but it makes it a global variable, so you should definitely make sure to remember to include the word var on your local variables. Um, so it says you've had uh, zero cups of coffee. Um, if you're really uh, worried about the, the plurality issue, uh, you can see that there's an issue for one. Um, so if number of coffee cups is equal to one, uh, then the message should be phrased a little bit differently, uh, and that's fairly easy to do. Uh, I'm just going to say, you've had one cup uh, of coffee. I could have left the variable there, but if I know it's going to be one, I'm just going to say it. Once we've got the string prepared, we're just going to use uh, jQuery to help us out and put that message in. Um, again, what we need to do is we just need to look at the HTML and say, hey, this thing's got an ID of message. Uh, that's going to be pretty easy to find. That's just dollar sign message. And what I'm going to choose to do is I'm going to choose to set the text on it, uh, and I'm just going to set it to my, my message string. So at that point, what you can do is you can actually test it out. Uh, so if you refresh this thing, uh, you can click on this plus button, uh, and it should say you've had one, two, three, four, five, six, as many cups of coffee as you want. Um, notice that it's still blurry and the other buttons aren't visible, and that's because we haven't done those things. Uh, but you can see that this is updating the view uh, to update that text. So, I mean, I, I did that kind of fast, uh, but hopefully it's a pretty straightforward task, uh, and you can hopefully knock that out as well. Pause the video if you need, right? That's the nice thing about videos. I can go as fast as I want, and you can pause the video. Next thing we need to do is we need to see if um, we should have the no cups class on the body or not. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to do a similar thing. We're going to say if coffee cups uh, is equal to zero, um, then what we're going to do is make sure that the body um, has that class. So we're just going to say add class uh, no cups. Great. Uh, and then if it's not zero, um, we're going to uh, make sure that it's gone, right? By the way, there are some issues here you might be worried about about going below zero. Um, technically, you shouldn't be able to go below zero because we hide the button uh, once you get to zero. Um, so I'm not going to worry about it here. So I'm just going to say it's either zero or it's non-zero. Um, and so we're going to either add or remove that class. So you can actually just go back and you can try this. So you just come refresh your page. Uh, so it's at zero now. And then as soon as I hit this, um, then I can actually I can see my other buttons now. And I can see the up and down work. Um, and then if I hit reset, that'll take me back to here. 
uh, the no cups class, it takes care of the blurry, it takes care of the tilt, um, and it takes care of the number of buttons being visible. You should also test your reset button, uh, make sure that it gets you there as well. All right, so that's actually two tasks down. Uh, so we've done uh, updating the message, uh, updating of the, uh, the no cups class in the body. Uh, the only other thing we need to do is we need to update the class that's on the image. If you go look at the CSS, you can see that there are four classes uh, that we might use on the image. Uh, there's no cups, three cups, four cups, and many cups. Um, and they use different animations uh, in the way they do their things. As the JavaScript developer, we, we really don't care how they do their things. We just need to know what class they need, uh, and that's our job, right? So what I'm going to choose to do is I'm going to choose to uh, start off by just removing any class that's on there. So I'm just going to say remove class. And you can actually remove many classes just by putting a space between them. So I'm just going to remove them all. I'm going to remove two, three, four, and many cups. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to make an if statement uh, for these different cases, right? So we'll do one together, and then we'll just kind of turn you loose to do some of the others. Um, so if it's two, uh, what I want to do is I want to say, hey, image, um, add the class uh, two cups. Note that there's no dot uh, when you do it this way. You just say add class, and it takes care of putting it in. Uh, see if you can pause the video and see if you can do um, the remaining situations. All right, so it's an else if uh, structure. It's not, it's not hard, right? Um, so I've got it here. So if it's three cups, uh, add the class three cups. Four cups, add the class four cups. Uh, more than four cups, uh, add the class more than four cups, which is many cups. Uh, save it up. Uh, and then come give that a whirl. So if I refresh my page now, uh, I should be able to say one cup, uh, which I didn't say anything new there. But as soon as I hit this, uh, it should add an animation for me, uh, which is great. If I hit it a second time, the animation will start going in a medium speed, so a little bit faster. If I hit it four times, uh, it starts to go to the, the four cups uh, area. And then if I hit it an additional time, it goes to many cups. Um, and you can see that the classes take care of, of all the rest, which is really pretty neat. Um, and it's cool how you can divide out that model view controller uh, into such independent pieces. Uh, so that's actually kind of it for the coffee counter. So it's just a quick little example of uh, listening for events, uh, keeping variables, so your model object, uh, and then updating the view through some DOM and CSS manipulators. Uh, assuming you're doing this class for credit, uh, we ask that you submit your link uh, to show that you followed along with these things. Uh, and you should be uh, all set. Oh, I mean, before you submit your link, make sure you deploy um, and make sure it works from the deployed version as well. Then submit your link. All right, that's it for Coffee Counter. Uh, we'll come back next time. We'll talk about the lab for this unit.